Hi, uh, welcome to the next video in the RPM Python series. So we have been discussing uh, different installation and uh, setting up the emulator in Android Studio. In this video, we're going to focus on uh, three major topics. Number one, how do we set up a real device? Number two, how we can invoke an application through the RPM desktop client? Number three, finally, we'll see how we can run our first test in the real device. Okay, let's get started. Uh, I'll show you that I've already connected a Android device. But if I go and show it to you, you should be familiar with this command, adb devices. It doesn't, it doesn't show up any, any uh, device attached to here because neither a emulator nor a phone, right? So what, I'm, what we need to do, just go to mobile. I'm gonna show you from here. You go to the mobile settings. So generally you will find this option at the bottom of your screen, gen something called about phone. If you click on it, if you scroll at the bottom, you will see something called build number, right? So if you press this seven time or eight time, you will be able to enable the developer option. If I click it here, this says that you are already a developer. So if I go back here, and then you will see something called developer options, right? So this is where we are enabling a debugging mode. That means that our RPM can interact with the real device, right? But it, does, it doesn't stop there. We need to be enabling one more thing, something called USB debugging. So this we are running the app in the debugging mode. That's when we are able to interact with it. So if you enable this one, and it will prompt you with a pop-up, say that click OK. The moment you complete, come back. Now check that whether you are able to see the attached device. If I execute the same command now, you are now seeing that there is a device attached to this, my computer, right? And sometimes you may see that there is an unauthorized thing. Um, I was, I told you in my previous video, if you get this in the emulator, you need to go and do a swipe data, a swipe data in the Android Studio. But in the real device, you can do it through just if you go back to the developer option. And you need to revoke the USB authorization. And then try killing the server and start the server. So a couple of server comments, then you need to just go and then ADB. You know the comment, ADB start server. The server is already started, so they need to stop, you need to kill and stop, right? So, because in my case, it is already connected, it, it doesn't show me that there is a authorized, unauthorized problem, so that's why I'm just proceeding with it now, okay? So, this is how you can make your phone interactive with your RPM client, right? So, now the real device setup is done, that's our part 1a, enabling the developer option. Now we also know how to enable and revoke the USB debugging. So if you enable it, they will be able to interact with your mobile. If you get an unauthorized error, then just go revoke the USB debugging option and then come back and start and stop your server. Sorry, stop and start, start your server, right? Okay, the next thing that we're gonna see is to invoke an app in the real device. The way we have done in emulator, we're gonna do the same thing in from the RPM server. So if I click on the RPM desktop, and if you open it, I'm gonna start the server. Remember that this is the port number, it's running. So if you start the server, and this is the interface, and we're gonna do the start inspector session, right? If you click on it, And we have seen what are the different uh, available uh, desired capabilities. So these are the capabilities that we have seen it already. So one more capability, I've just built it for the real device. So with this now, I'm just putting a very minimal thing. In this time, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to install and flip card application on my mobile. So the path of the application is here. This is the download path. And the device name is something that name that we got from here. It's not an Android emulator. 
it is the device number device name that you need to paste it here right the device name is clear platform is clear and app is clear now right but remember that we have had two more additional uh, capabilities that's nothing but app package and app wait activity that you can do once you have the app in your mobile right okay so with this command now i'm just going to start my session and then see whether we are able to see that starting it in e mobile this session right the moment you start appm server is also get started and now you see that and keep an eye on the uh, lock because that will give you whether it is successful or failure and this time yes we were able to invoke the application in our mobile now right this is the application we want to load again from this point we need to just identify the element and then start interacting with it okay so our second part is done so we now know how to invoke a real application and an application in the real device right let's move on to the, our third part third part is nothing but invoking the same test from our python right how do we do that so there are a couple of things we need to do before it because as we know any language uh, definitely it requires uh, the dependencies to be downloaded like java we have a pom.xml which downloads all of the dependencies here we need to do the same thing so how do we do that if you remember our initial video there is a pip command so it's a pip package manager for python which downloads all the packages right so we need to just go command line if i go to the uh, project this is a project that we, we have created and if i go to virtual environment i told you what is a virtual environment when virtual environment it is basically a an isolated environment from different project right so where we can keep all the different version of the software whatever we need so if we go under the library and site packages so these are all the packages available at the moment so we don't see any dependency for appm right so how do we get started so there are two ways you can do that one the easiest way in through the ui you can just go to uh, file settings project interpreter and you see something called the plus symbol here right the moment you click here these are the available packages in this project the project called appm sandbox right so if you click on the plus symbol it's going to give up this ui and if you type appm and this is going to give you uh, different options the option that we are going to see now here appm python client this client in includes all of the appm uh, files as well as selenium so basically selenium is a wrapper around uh, sorry appm is a wrapper around selenium we'll get all the complete package okay so this is the one way you can do it other way you can do the same thing through going to this script folder and then find it in the path show in explorer and if you open a command prompt from here right and you need to move to the script folder basically so cd if you type script you will get this option and from here you need to just do the same thing pip install so where do i get the package name so if you google and you put pypy so this is the pack complete package index for the entire python language right so you can find whatever you need so i'm searching for the rpm one the moment you select and you will be given a lot of options the, the option that we are looking at here is the rpm python client this one 0.36 okay these are all very specific library because this one comprises of everything so we are just, we are just going to select this one and you see that this is a, this is a common prompt so we just copy this one that means a pip install appm python client so the moment you go there and you can just put the comment here and then install it right so this will in, this will install all the required packages and if you now go to the project and if you see now in the site packages now you see all the packages are uploaded now right so that means that we need we have uh, we have downloaded all the required dependencies right so from this point onwards we will be able to interact with any of the object or uh, properties from the rpm so let's get let's create a sample python file let me name this as first test okay so this like any other language like for example if you come from java background you know that we need to import it right that's our first statement so import 
uh, equal the same keyword here but little different there are three ways we can import it that we can directly import it or we can just say from this folder import it or import as example so the, there are three options we are going to see that in the future videos but for now what we need to import it we need to go to library uh, site packages this rpm under this rpm we have something called web driver so we need this driver and if you go because in python the way it understands in pycharm i'll give you a little more you know tips how we can uh, interact with it for example if i directly type import web driver it doesn't give me an option at all because it can't find the web driver directly so the interpreter doesn't find the web driver directly how we can confirm it if you go to the settings again and if you go to the project interpreter and you click this uh, gear icon and if you press show all and if you say the last option here like something like hierarchy and this queues give me a second okay so if you click on this option so this is where the interpreter look for everything below right so we have something called library site packages and these are all python specific thing and there is a virtual environment uh, folder also there and there is something called lib site packages and site packages tool so anything below this parent folder then the interpreter will be able to import it but our package is under the site packages under appium right so we can't directly import web driver that's the reason so anything below site packages we'll be able to interact with this so that's where we are using the from command here so from we put because anything below site packages the interpreter has a visibility what is there in there right so from if we say appium and then import web driver right because under the appium you have two things right we go here there is something called common and something called web driver that's where we are interested in and we know that it is using the same web driver protocol that's where we are using we are getting that web driver thing okay so we are seeing an underline because we have not used this uh, anywhere in our code we are going to use it now okay so like in selenium so we need to create a desire capability so the whatever parameter that we have passed in in our uh, inspector here we need to pass the same thing to the script so that's where we will be able to create a driver object so the way we can do it because remember it is a key value pair and python we have something called dictionary which is nothing but the same key value pair so we are going to create a dictionary so let's say desired cap equal to this is the uh, decorator for uh, dictionary right so i'm going to copy paste all of the value that we have here because it's already there in the dictionary format you can copy all of this let me copy from here and then here go back and put all of the value so the easy the, the shortcut to uh, clean up if you are using a pycharm in windows just control all control a and control alt i will do the indentation indentation right okay so now we know that desire capabilities there is a there is a dictionary which is called a desire capability and from here we need to just go and try invoke a driver so just like selenium we could do the same thing right so now we have imported a web driver web driver is nothing but a folder here right so if we say web driver dot there is a remote class there you see that select the remote class it's just like the way we are invoking a grid in selenium right so if you don't know what to be given and for the in input uh, the parameter or arguments just do control q this is going to tell you what you need to be providing so it expects self that's fine we will discuss more about what is self in the future video but now we need to provide a command executor of this kind right this is nothing but the way it can find out this connection detail so if we go to the easiest way you can get this from is this way right so this is this this is the connection so we need to give this connection first as a first parameter within double quote or single quote that's fine and 
we need to also append this with if we just put control q again this is going to give you the format wd and iphone right that's webdriver dot hub webdriver hub right okay now we know that because it's running on the port it's listening on the port 4723 that's why we are specifying but in here by default they say 4444 yeah that's not where our appm client is running so the next parameter that we need to provide is the desired capabilities object that we created the dictionary object right so if you provide it here that's all and in python there is no semicolon here it's pretty simple plain language but it maintains the indentation so you need to be clear about the hierarchy we'll be seeing in the future video but for now it is done so if i create from here the driver object will be created i'm going to save this as a driver that's fine and i'm just going to be leaving it here so with this few lines of code now we are able to do the same thing what we have done in here right we'll be able to do the same thing but here remember that the server has to be still running we can't ignore it but instead of going to the inspector and start the session this time we are going to do this from the pycharm so let's run and keep an eye on the uh, mobile whether we are able to invoke it and we also be looking at the logs right click on it or just go here and then run the first driver test and if you look at the device and console also carefully okay there's another uh, it says that can't open the file okay let me run it again uh, first test there might be some configuration thing and if you go keep an eye on the device and also the logs yes so we are now able to, we are now able to invoke the same application through our python so this is our first test and definitely we're going to see what our what are our different locating strategies how we can locate the element like selenium what are the different methods are available and how we can you know uh, do a real uh, real test using the real object and then how we can navigate what are the different mobile specific action that we will be i mean that we'll be looking at in the future videos so if you have any question comments just uh, put it in the comment section and if you have if you like the video please subscribe thanks for watching